it gives you a lot more development capacity, but maybe a lot less interesting street, and we lose that urban design relationship. So in, in, in approach 3C, it's only the clusters. Um, you could have that height relationship if you wanted to add it, that with the street uh, height of buildings relationship, but still apply it only to the clusters. I would argue that it gives you the least additional development capacity, but it gives you, um, you know, potentially, um, uh, it, it's an approach that could nevertheless be interesting and it does accommodate some additional growth. I'd like to say that I'm probably the, I would say only Washingtonian here, born and raised 76 years here in DC, and I find the city to be very much a neighborhood kind of city. And when we talk about Maryland Avenue and Rhode Island Avenue coming up with buildings as tall as 130 some feet, then you're ruining the neighborhoods. And as it is now, we've lost a lot of our green space and parks that we once had because of all the condos and things that are building, being built. I'm like the lady who made a comment over there. What happened to the low income and median income housing for the people who are here or instead of trying to bring more people here with high buildings? I am definitely, once you set a, a goal to raise the height, what's to stop someone from building a building next to my house at that height, which is in the neighborhood? So you sort of have to look at the whole picture because once it's put in black and white, people will go by that. Right. Um, I think that that's a that's a, a great concern um, uh, that you're raising, and that's why I I was hoping to to really emphasize um, that when we looked at at the city and where we were considering additional height, that that we were absolutely. Uh, looking to protect neighborhoods. Even in those plans where you saw 130 feet of height, um, they were in areas that were already zoned, not zoned, but indicated in the comp plan uh, that they were allowed for additional height. And it's not a lot of places. It's really, um, you know, these are the places that would see no changes, ma'am. See the places in red on the map? Yeah. None of those places we're looking at higher heights, higher building heights. Okay, so that's. As you can see, the vast majority of the city would get, you know, wouldn't be affected by uh, these changes in building heights. That and, and the places that would be affected are have already been identified in the comp plan as places for growth. So I definitely hear what you're saying. I've not lived here my whole life, only since 1989. Uh, but in my in my time here, there have been a lot of changes. Well, you lived here when the city was 850,000 people. You know, I haven't seen anything like that. I can't even imagine. And they are bringing back streetcars, and I, I lived here when there were box streetcars, and they spent a lot of money to tear up the streets for boxes. And so we're sort of going round in a circle, putting down street contracts now. You know, that, that's absolutely and true. And that, you increase the city's service. In my neighborhood where I live, it took me almost 40 years to get a paved out. Only three years ago, we got a paved out. So when you increase the height, you bring in more people. That impacts on the city services that are being offered, too. It, it does, and I think that one of the things that we're seeing with our increased population is we're also getting a little bit more income a little bit more revenue to the city to be able to increase our city services and pave alleys and rebuild schools and rebuild libraries but i, I hear what you're saying it, it is definitely talking about uh, about additional changes but the intention is our uh, the first policy decision we made was to not bring these additional heights to these neighborhoods the neighborhoods that are in red that they we would continue to protect them as the comp plan indicates I think what we'll do is go to this lady in the black t-shirt, and then if we can, I'll work to the gentleman in the pink shirt. And I see you right in the back, and yeah. we'll see how the microphone uh, lighting works. Okay. I just wanted to say I thought this was very interesting and a good rigorous approach to looking, you know, for different, you know, ways of, of uh, increasing height. 
I just had a clarification as to process. You began at the beginning saying that we would need to <coughs> amend any of our zoning codes and comprehensive plan as a result of any of these changes. And maybe this is just a semantic thing, but 1B, which is the penthouse occupancy, is effectively changing the bulk of buildings, even if we're still built into the allowable height. So am I correct to understand it was put under approach one, no height increase, because it's something the city could do anyway, irrespective of the study and what Congress does? No, that to have that penthouse uh, not be set back and, and or to have it be occupied, either one of those two things, uh, well, particularly the occupancy would require a change of the federal law. Okay. But it's a, it's a relatively minor change. I mean, we could have made it another approach. Okay. You know, but, yeah. Um, I think we'll go with this gentleman. Approach number four. Uh, I like the illustrative area clusters concept. Thing about it is, we're looking at we're looking at it at the Elephant City uh, concept of out uh, in looking out. And the reason I like uh, approach number four with the illustrative area clusters, it's looking from out, looking in. I would rather preserve the views of the Capitol, the Washington Monument that area there and preserving what El uh, Mr. Elephant want and Benjamin Banneker there and then having the area clusters building, having a market, uh, creative uh, private market forces uh, outside, outside looking uh, creatively, building up vertically, looking in toward the Elephant City than building and losing uh, losing the site of the, uh, the the river, the Lincoln <coughs> Monument, the Washington Monument, and the Capitol, uh, having it all raised from the center. I rather I, I would rather have it uh, the outside looking in. I, I brought a, a picture of Seattle. I lived in Seattle for six years, and market forces built. Um, Market forces built the height limits, uh, the, the high, high unrestricted limits on the uh, on the city, and that's where I see uh, this city would. We we have to stop looking selfishly, where all oh, preserve my neighborhood and everything, and, and uh, I'm looking at it for a hundred years, where if we build those clusters outside looking in, uh, you would preserve the character of the city. And, uh, and at the same time, we can balance our approach with the neighborhoods, because e even, even uh, to have a, a nice, tall building yeah. next to you, uh, I would disagree. Like, for example, if, you, if we look at uh, Walter Reed and build some narrow, beautiful, residential, commercial buildings on, on Walter Reed, on the on, on the Walter Reed side now 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 that the government and the hospital is it, it has has left, uh, there's enough buffer to see something vertical with it, with Chevron Park and uh, uh, the na surrounding neighborhoods to look at that and see that way and, and also the gentleman said about Georgia Avenue even even uh, Georgia Avenue corridor you know we, we really should be looking outside looking in and then rather than inside and losing losing the, the character of of uh, what Mr. Elephant and uh, Benjamin Banneker wanted to preserve. Hi, Casey. Um, if we can, uh, the woman in the black dress with the red flowers, if you just want to speak loudly, I'll repeat your question, and then we'll go to this lady here in the white. Are you sure? I don't mind walking over there. Oh, you can do that. Um, I have to tell the question. Oh, God. Okay. Um, to persuade people why 
you know, why you would want to do it. And, and I just was hoping that we actually could see a presentation about that too. Is there another set of meetings for that presentation? Or um, are they waiting until that study's done? No, we, we presented the preliminary findings of it. And uh, honestly, the only reason we didn't is that my, uh, uh, the person who's normally would do that presentation is uh, is on the lab, and so uh, and, and because it, it, it uh, the last uh, the last time we, we did it, uh, all the questions we got were about this part of the study, and and uh, and it took all the time that we had. But we're I'd be happy to either sit down with you or uh, or uh, or or make the time at our at our last meeting on Tuesday uh, to to make sure that we do that presentation. Is it also going to be covered in phase three? It is. It'll be it, the the expanded version will be part of what we talk about in terms of the rationale for why making any changes. Okay, I have a couple of other sort of technical questions about this presentation. It, it mentions that federal properties are excluded. I think that was slide twenty five. Mm -hmm. But yet I heard you refer to the soldiers' home and Walter Reed being included because they're quote slated for development, but they are federal properties, right? So are there um, other federal properties that are excluded from the exclusion sort of? There, the Walter Reed, uh, the parts of it that are excluded, we, we actually didn't, I'm, not, I'm, I'm correcting myself, and I don't think we studied uh, Walter Reed as one of the illustrative areas, um, but uh, but the Old Soldier's Home is, is, a, is, a, is a very good point. The, they're an exceptional property uh, that they are federal, but the Congress has required them to essentially fund their operations through the their use of their property and what they propose to do is to make it available for private development. And, and maybe just to add on to that, it's not the entire site, it's just the seven and a half that in their master plan they ask for the opportunity to, to develop that portion of it. Okay. Another question I had had to do with how low density historic districts are defined. They were excluded from the um, areas considered for development. And what I had seen this presentation before, somebody else from OP was unable to say exactly how they defined low density historic districts and whether they divided historic districts up. For example, DuPont Circle is not exempted. Um, and DuPont Circle is included within the areas um, slated for you know, this higher development. And so we were wondering, what is the height limit in what was considered low density historic districts? And this relates to the neighborhood question as well. So, so low density um, isn't a zoning category per se. So we, I, I keep going back to the comprehensive plan's future land use map, where we describe things as high density, medium density, moderate density, and low density. So basically everything that wasn't um, high or medium density, we're considering low density. So the historic districts are individually mapped, and those parts of the historic districts that were not designated in the future comp plan land use map as high or medium density, residential or commercial or mixed use, high or medium density, we considered low density and excluded them. If parts of them were, were on the future land use map as high or medium density, they were included even if they were historic. And what's height difference between low and medium. So we're, we're it's not a zoning medium. category, so it's not a hard and fast rule. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because, I mean, just to take DuPont, for example, there's certain areas within DuPont that are higher density, but there are also areas, and this is true of many historic neighborhoods and historic districts where for the people who live there, it certainly feels like low density, and I think there's some surprise to find out that these are characterized, are protected as low density areas. It's whatever is so specified in the zoning map and you the zoning map. The comp. The comprehensive yeah. plan future land use map. And you find out which, what designation applies to each wall. Absolutely. Um, I, I guess another comment is um, with respect to um, the difference between office and residential, it seemed like there was a lot of focus on uh, residential. Maybe this is a question that relates to the economic feasibility presentation, but you know, there's a really important office trend going on in which there's a substantial consolidation and reduction 
of offices in the federal government in particular is really leading the way on this and, and dramatically reducing and consolidating the number, the, the amount of office space. I think you might have missed the very beginning of the presentation where we did mention that exact phenomenon. Okay, yes, I did, I did miss because it was so impossible to find this My <laughs> Ah. Um, anyway, what, so one more comment I wanted to just make is that the congressional directive to do this study really focused on uh, looking outside the Longmont City, but the bottom line seems to very much target inside the Longmont City. And um, so I, I thought the comments of the, the previous speaker were very interesting. Um, it doesn't really, it does seem to focus predominantly on targeting that uh, inside the Long Beach City area. All right, thank you. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. I'll just make one last comment on what you had, your, your, your final point. I think the, the, the letter uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, Chairman Issa uh, certainly distinguished between the Long Beach City inside and outside, uh, but, uh, but we interpreted his meaning to suggest in his comments subsequent to suggest he wanted us to look at both, but that he was very concerned about impacts inside the Long Pond City. So we probably did overemphasize our analysis of impacts inside the Long Pond City, uh, but I wouldn't take that to suggest that we we're only interested in uh, you know, height increases inside the Long Pond City. Just that, that's the area where if we had any increases, they'd have the greatest impact on the things that people are most concerned about. So we wanted to make sure we studied it very carefully. Okay, this lady here, and then uh, the lady in the back. Yeah. Hi, thank you, Harriet, uh, for putting this together. A um, couple ideas I have I'd like to recommend. I think it's on approach to street to height relationship. Um, like in approach one, you have A and B, that if we had A and B option here, um, because I don't see an offering for to reduce um, or a greater restrict what we currently have available, what we allow, because some of the pictures showing what it could look like um, with what's currently allowed, um, I'd rather not allow them. I see um, <coughs> Buildings going up on, on North Capitol Street, the one that just went up north of um, the NPR building, which it's it's starting to obstruct the view, and it's all the way out to the street, and it has a greater height. And I'm concerned that even with what we're allowed now, that our infrastructure is at a breaking point, whether the sewer capacity, we hear about the water lines breaking, our power grid, and there's a significant Storm. We all know about TEPCO and then the lights are out. And I just feel that uh, there is an impact now with what we currently have. And if everybody built up to what is allowed, that we wouldn't be able to sustain that uh, growth. Uh, also, so I'd like to see an approach to restrict or reduce what's currently allowed. So you're suggesting that we ask Congress to act to to add restrictions that we are perfectly um, able to add ourselves under local law? Well, if that's what they need to hear, right now this is all about growth. How about we it's reduce? A I mean, that is an option. We don't always have to grow, grow, grow. True, um, but I'm just saying this is the the. the the congressional request was about a change in federal law. And I've showed you lots of examples in the city where we have zoning-based limits that are lower than the height limit, uh, well below the height limit. So I'm just trying to get clarification. Is it a, are you making a general point that the city could, should consider downsizing some of its current zoning? Or are you suggesting that the federal government should act to federally restrict us further from building height? It could be both, but I think it's, it's an option that we could say, you know, maybe we live within our means. Mm -hmm. uh, because I just see this as an encroachment and it, the ball starts rolling and right now I'm also seeing the, um, can any growth, the bigger buildings mean more people 
and more traffic and more pollution, more sewer impact, all of that. And currently it takes me from a daily commute, 90 minutes, an hour and a half to go from the top of the city down to Capitol Hill, and that's without any uh, accidents. And so there's the drive time impact as well as the walk time. But I just think the, the impact. Also, even the small um, changes that we want to make, say for the, um, the penthouses, where now the HVAC, if we put <laughs> homes in there, well, where does the HVAC go? It goes up above that. So that's, that's not being well, mentioned. The idea is that we, if we, one of the things that we were talking about is if we were to make any changes to the high building set that we would require the mechanicals to be contained within whatever that top floor is, thereby getting rid of those kind of structures. But, the, so that's one consideration. But let me just point out that um, uh, right now 500,000 people come to the district every day um, to they commute in uh, to work here. And that one opportunity that the city might have and is already beginning to somewhat realize is with additional residential population, capturing more of the jobs that are held in the district by district residents, thereby reducing the amount of commuting that's actually happening. So that's another potential outcome of this change. It's not all necessarily that everything gets worse. The, the, uh, in terms of the environmental impacts, um, you know, I, I would put up our city's current per capita carbon footprint against any of the surrounding jurisdictions, that the ability to live in a place where you have much lower transportation costs and needs and a lot more things within walking distance, a, a building stock that is a lot more energy efficient, all of those things contribute to a lower environmental impact per capita, but uh, you know, those are those are uh, those are things that we addressed in our sustainability plans, in particular. Um, uh, we'll go to the woman in the white jacket, and then the gentleman behind her. I will uh, note, just in the interest of time, we're right up against our, our time limit, so we'll take maybe uh, those two questions, and that gentleman right here who has not yet spoken uh, will will then be available after the meeting as well for comments just because I want to respect everyone's time. Hi, thank you. All right, this is my second uh, attendance at, at phase two meeting, um, and it, it does require more than one hearing, so I, I learned a lot this time. Thank you very much. Um, but I just want to suggest or follow up on something that you started out by saying, which I had never heard before, but which I believe in my bones is the truth, which is that the height act has forced us to spread out, and after years and years of planning and trying to drive development to new places, it is finally starting to burn the city. It's terribly exciting. And um, so I asked you last time if we could um, find out exactly how much square footage, if you will, and air right space, I don't know uh, what the technical terms for those are, is left to be developed under more or less the, the, the status quo. Yeah, because it looks like that may be serving us in good stead, much better than other cities around the country and the world are in fact being served, so that we might, rather than be you know, looking towards how much can we grow up, be looking at how the height limit is actually helping us to effectively grow out to areas that have been begging for development for decades, and which will make it a more walkable and livable city, which I know are also goals of the opposite plan, but thanks for doing that, so thank you, I appreciate it. I think we'll go to this gentleman back here. Thank you, Harry. Um, I wanted to pick up for just a second on the comments from the woman in white, preceding uh, Robin. Um, and it seems to me that if the timeline that we're looking at is something like 100 years, and um, it's a historic opportunity to look at the height act and the shape of our city that Congress has basically mandated, um, that some of the points that she made relative to things that are on the table really are important and they need to be there. 
Um, you know, this is not going to be a popular view of the city, but it may be that when you take a look at a vista like North Capitol Street or a view from certain specific areas on the top of the ground control, that not only um, what's guiding the development is obviously the Height Act, but also the zoning, as you say. For instance, North Capitol Street, where the zoning prohibits heights above 90 feet, that the city's done a pretty good job for 100 years and you know, uh, has, has created a, a, a view on North Capitol Street. But maybe the Congress actually does need to provide guidance and additional restrictions, actually, um, on specific areas and specific views. I think that can't be taken off the table. Thank you. I think our last comment, this gentleman right here, if you want to. Uh, I think so. I, I can do this without a mic. Uh, I'm, I'm arriving a little bit late, and I just wanted clarification on one thing. Um, have there have the uh, have there been studies on how much population we can accommodate under each of these scenarios? Because it's just hard for me to make a judgment on on which one feels best alone. Uh, no, we have not yet done that, but we understand that that's something we have to be able to speak to uh, at the time we make some recommendations. But we also wanted to get some feedback from uh, from you know uh, from people reacting to you know to uh, how well these various proposals uh, uh, meet our stated uh, objectives uh, for protection of the city. How well that they what kind of a job they do with that, and and then. Uh, Compare that to some uh, scenarios and future projections about our job and population growth to see how things sync up. Um, I, I know we do have, have extra questions, but we will be here. After. I want to make a short comment. I agree with the lady who spoke a few minutes ago there in the white t shirt. I agree with everything that she said. And you were talking about people, so many people commuting in the city and making facilities available. Well, many people commute out of the city because presently they can't afford to live in the city because no housing is being, affordable housing is being built for the people. So I'm with her, you increase the, uh, the roads are bad, you increase the roads, the transportation is bad, everybody complains, we, most of us seem to love the city and I think a lot of us are pretty well satisfied the way it is. And I, I really get upset with Congress always telling us what to do. I wish Congress worked as well to try to get us representation like everyone else in the United States. That's my attitude. And also, the other thing, will this be put on the ballot for the city to vote on instead of a final word? Uh, you know, it's not a ballot measure. This is a, a study that we're sending to Congress. Congress, you know, well, will, I will, think Congress needs to start staying out of our business and start giving us the rights like everybody else. Some would, some would argue that a restriction on height in the city is is being in our business. But uh, the, you know, this is not just Daryl Issa. This is also uh, uh, our delegate, uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, and they've been working very closely together to to examine this issue. What would happen before any heights in, in, in the city would change is that we would have to have a revised comprehensive plan approved by the council, and there would also have to be zoning changes approved by the zoning commission. Both of those would involve a very extensive public process. So the, the, uh, uh, this is not just about Congress acting and then a magic wand gets waved and it happens. So there'd be a lot that, that, would, uh, that would involve our citizens and our choices whether uh, and if to raise any heights that Congress would uh, have permitted us to raise. But I see this as we're different than we were in Maryland. Right. We're boxed in between Virginia and Maryland. Our space is limited. So ma'am, I think uh, those are always, uh, almost everyone here is probably a district resident, as, uh, so we, we hear what you're, what you're saying. Um, we have time for one more, is that? I okay. just wanted to make a comment Please. that one of the reasons I, that I came here is just exactly what she mentioned, affordable housing. And it seems to me that that seems to be more of a selling point than anything because 
as I understand it, the affordable housing laws in DC are already not being enforced. So how can you be sure that with the extra growth that would come, that the affordable housing laws would be enforced? So right now we have, uh, since 2006, uh, citywide inclusionary zoning requirements. So not a lot of jurisdictions require that um, uh, that eight to 10 percent of all the new housing that gets built in the city uh, has to be permanently affordable. So that's something that would help us in the future. But there's actually nothing that would prevent us saying we want more aggressive um, affordable housing requirements put on top of uh, any any ability to build higher. But I think I said at the beginning that high rise construction is not the cheapest construction. That you know typically it doesn't hurt. You know it's. It's, if you're looking for affordability, that's not necessarily your best strategy, but it does greatly, it has the potential to uh, increase the supply, and that, and that means that the pressure on the housing prices at every level gets lessened if we have a larger supply. Right now, we have some supply constraints, and we're feeling it in rents, and we're feeling it in housing prices in general. Um, so that, you know, that is, a, that is a, something to be concerned about going forward. You can say, don't do anything. City planners don't do anything on CPC. But last time I checked, we couldn't bar the door, right? That we can't say to people, you can't come here. You know, we, we, we want you out. I mean, the way we did it before is not how we want to do it again, right? Which is to be a place so, with, you know, so hard to live in that, that people didn't want to be here. So the question is, how do we, how do we accommodate the growth that we're, we're getting in a way that allows everybody who wants to be here to be able to stay here or to come here. That's the, that's the question we're grappling with. But thank you for that comment. Thank you. And I would like to, um, uh, first of all, thank all of you. Uh, a Saturday in August, we know that uh, that's a tough call. Um, we really appreciate um, everyone's attention, the great comments we've received. We hope you will continue to follow this effort, to check it out online and to please provide your comments, either in your workbooks or following up again online or at subsequent public meetings. I'd also like to give a big thank you to Catholic University and to Hazel Edwards. Uh, she's up there, she's been helping us run the mics, but she actually has a day job here running the planning program at Catholic. So even though it was perhaps for some of you a little bit hard to find, now we know it's here and we recognize <laughs> what a terrific place this is. And Hazel has a great lecture series as well uh, that, that I think it is open to the public for people to be able to attend. So I hope this won't be your last time uh, here at uh, at uh, Catholic. Thank so, you. So again, one, one more one me. more time. I have one I'm other time. Yeah. Well no, done. No, right it has to do so it's www.ncpc.gov backslash height study. We will all be here after uh, after this, so if you have additional questions, please feel free to come up and talk to us. Thank you.